She is a Sesame Street icon, winning over fans as the beloved Maria for nearly 50 years and 15 Emmys as a writer. Now Sonia Manzano is getting animated as Granny Issa on the acclaimed series she created, Alma's Way. Take a look. It's our pleasure to present Granny on the Go. Okay, okay. Oh, whoops. Hola, familia. Check me out. That's amazing. amazing. So cool. Hola, Isa. Give me a spin, Alma. <laughs> you know to get to it. And Sonia is with me now. Welcome, so good to see you. Hola, familia. Hola, Check familia. me out. I'm glad to be here. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. I mean, this seems like a no-brainer to me with all your experience on Sesame Street. What kind of inspired this show? Well, somebody asked me to do it from PBS after Sesame Street. That would have been a tough act to follow. Oh, and I, I know. I, so, but I did notice how the, the kids needed an understanding of critical thinking. There's yes, few, yes. Uh, uh, ideas being tossed around these days. So that's what Alma's Way is about. It's about thinking. Yeah, and, and so the, sh the, the show uh, centers around this young Puerto Rican girl in the Bronx. Her yeah, name is Alma. Alma. Tell yes. us a little bit about the story. Well, she's kind of based on my own life. She lives in the neighborhood much like the neighborhood I lived in. Granny Issa is named after my own mother. Oh, my uh, gosh. Uh, Granny Issa is very close to Alma as Alma was very close to my, to my own daughter. The number six train is in it. And that's because when I was a kid, I watched a lot of television television never saw anybody who looked like me and yeah. felt bad about that but not anymore yeah I mean so I was gonna I was gonna ask you that this is this is the Bronx you grew up in the Bronx yeah. obviously it was important for you to represent kind of your childhood and where you came from absolutely and the Bronx now is more diverse than it was when I was growing up there yeah. so I and we've done we've nodded to that and there's a lot of music and a lot of hip-hop as you know yes, you gotta yes. have hip-hop if it's in the Bronx you do so tell us a little bit about Granny Issa she is a stewardess. She doesn't live with the family, so she's always flying around all over the world. Uh, she's divorced from Abuela, who does live with the family. Oh, interesting. So we get to touch on those uh, uh, emotions that a child might go through. Yeah. Uh, but in this, in this particular episode, Granny Isa connects with her granddaughter via the internet. And because of COVID, we, no we noticed that a lot of families, that's the only way they can yeah, get together true. is through the internet. And so we wanted to show that in a positive way. Yeah, and this show is made with Fred Rogers Productions. Fred Rogers Productions, you, I know. Did you cross paths with him ever? Yes, in the 10th season, uh, Fred Rogers came to Sesame Street and we had our photo taken. We were so, such different shows. Sesame Street was, uh, you know, jokes and smart alecky. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Rogers was tender and yes. to the heart and more quiet. So I think that I've... It's a good combination. Yeah. I'm working uh, very well with Ellen Doherty, who's an executive producer at Fred Rogers Productions. It was her idea to say, hey, let's really put it in the Bronx. Yeah, if yeah. It's in the Bronx, why fool around? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And the both of you, you and Fred Rogers, are, are children's TV icons. Um, did you ever have that moment in your career where you thought, this is what I'm meant to be doing? I'm meant to be teaching children in this way? Well, I certainly didn't start out to do that. I thought I. I thought I'd do regional theater because I wonder if so you could I could do, me a do Shakespearean here. roles because it was okay to be now, Puerto Rican and play nice, Shakespeare really yeah. uh, because we weren't on television at that time. But I just, when I fell into Sesame Street in 69, I, I really enjoyed what they were doing. Yeah. It really turned me on, and I said, I'm going to stick with these people, yeah. and I did. And we're so glad that you did. Thank you. <laughs> but you also took part in the White House Easter egg role. When people see you, what is their reaction to you, kids and parents? Uh, I know. Well, you know, my fans are getting older and older. Now they ask me to go out for martinis, my friends. <laughs> yeah. so, but I, it was freezing. I love to go to the White House, but this particular last visit, it was freezing. It was raining. It was so cold, I couldn't turn the pages of the book. Oh, no. But I have to say, kudos to those parents. They got those tickets. Yep. They got showed the hotel up. room. They showed up. Yeah. So they really, really put out and do a lot for their well, children. I'm glad that you showed up today because it was just a pleasure speaking with you. And you can catch new episodes of Alma's Way weekdays at 8.30 a.m. on PBS Kids and on the PBS Kids app. Thank you so much. I can't wait to show Fiona. Thank you. <laughs> All right.